Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. It is time to get started. Um, thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us for our December webinar, How to Promote Digital Citizenship with K-12 Technology Integration. My name is Tiara Lustig. I'm on the marketing team here at Dino, and I'll be hosting today's webinar with Chuck Holland, who is the Director of Instructional Technology at, Rich at Richland District 2 in South Carolina. Um, so digital citizenship is a huge topic of conversation right now, and we wanted to sit down today with Chuck and talk about how you can work to promote digital citizenship in, in your school this coming year after the new year. So before we dive into the webinar, um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Dino, Dino is a classroom management solution that helps teachers defeat device distractions and keep students on task in one-to-one -one device environments on Chromebooks, PCs, and MacBooks. Um, so with a network of thousands of teachers, tech coaches, and administrators, we have the resources to be a platform for educators to share how they maximize technology integration in their schools and districts um, and how they support district-wide initiatives. So our hope with this is to give you the resources and the tips to do the same and maximize your one-to-one -one device program. Um, so Richland District 2 has been a Dino user for about a year and a half and Last month when Dino was at SC Ed Tech, we met with Chuck um, and he was talking to us about how Dino has helped them promote digital citizenship in their classrooms. And so we thought it would be a great opportunity to go deeper into this topic on a webinar and talk about not only how Dino can help you promote digital citizenship in your classrooms, but also how you as a district or a school can promote digital citizenship on a daily basis. Um, so before we dive into our webinar topic, I want to go over what you can expect out of today's webinar. So our webinar is being recorded and it will be made available to everyone after the event. Um, if you registered ahead of time or if you're currently attending, it will be emailed to you today. And then if you didn't register ahead of time, it'll be made available on our YouTube channel tomorrow. So keep an eye out for that and feel free to share it with anyone in your network who you think might benefit from it. Um, we also have a Q&A portion of this webinar, so you can exit out of your full screen webinar at any time and use that Q&A button in the bottom um, and submit a question for me or Chuck to answer, and we'll take those questions at the end. So feel free to submit them throughout the whole webinar as any questions come to mind. Um, so as I mentioned, our topic is digital citizenship, and what you can expect to learn today is what digital citizenship really means and how to encourage it in the classroom on a daily basis, what technology tools can help you teach digital citizenship in the classroom, and how to move students from just being good digital citizens to then becoming digital leaders in their community. So I'm going to jump now, stop sharing my screen so that you can see Chuck and I. Hi, Chuck. Um, like I said, I'm Tiara. I'm on our marketing team. Chuck, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, explain your role, and kind of what your uh, initiatives are right now at Richland? Sure. Uh, like Tiara said, my name is Chuck Holland. I am the Director for Instructional Technology in Richland School District 2. Uh, we're located in Columbia, South Carolina. We're a school district of about 28,000 students with about 40 buildings, uh, so, you know, a good-sized district. Uh, we, my role is we, we have a technology and learning coach at every school. Uh, we're very fortunate to have that, uh, and, and I support, uh, with my team, we support the technology learning coaches with professional development, uh, helping them to um, roll out all of the district technology initiatives. You know, we are a one-to-one -one district, so the, you know, working with teachers on best practices with technology. Uh, and so it's just a, an ongoing, everyday, exciting day, something new kind of experience that we get to do, but mostly working with the coaches, teachers, uh, and, and things like that as they integrate technology into their class. Awesome. So jumping into the webinar uh, mm -hmm. interview portion of this and the discussion that we're going to have. So I understand digital citizenship to be how we teach students to be safe and responsible and effective users of devices and the internet, not only in the classroom, but outside of it. How do you define digital citizenship and what does it mean specifically at Richland? Um, yeah, I agree with everything that you just said. I mean, I think that's a good good brief description of or definition of digital citizenship 
but I also think it goes beyond just how to behave online and, and, and that it, it goes to what you do online as well. You know, are you an advocate for uh, different uh, issues? Uh, you know, so it, it's, it's behavior is one thing. It, I just, I look at digital citizenship really as, you know, what do you do in a digital world? What, what is your life like in a digital world? Are, are you a positive influence or a negative influence? Uh, are you, you doing inappropriate things or appropriate things? Uh, it's not about a whole list of things you shouldn't do as much as it's about a list of things that you should be doing, which is the same kinds of things we ask kids to do uh, in the classroom. We spend a lot of time talking about behavior in the classroom, you know, things like how you interact with people, don't interrupt, those sorts of things. We talk about those behaviors in face-to-face -face world, but there's also a whole list of behaviors uh, and interactions uh, online. And so digital citizenship goes way beyond just don't do bad things, you know, make sure you cite your sources and things like that. It goes beyond that to your everyday interactions online. And I think too, with today's world, the way everything is so intertwined with digital technologies that the behaviors online are becoming more and more important. Uh, and it's more responsibility now for, for us in the education world because we are putting devices in the hands of these students and we're just expecting them to act the right way. But online behavior, we all know, is very different than our face-to-face -face behavior. It's, it's hard for adults to, to recognize that difference, and, uh, and it's even harder for students to do that. Yeah, I think it's interesting because digital citizenship, in definition, we're calling them citizens in the digital world, and it's a whole another world that we're introducing right. them to, like you said, and there are different behaviors and different ways of life and, and acting that they have to take into consideration. So um, what measures has Richland 2 taken to promote digital citizenship in their classroom? Uh, you know, we, we've, we've done lots of different things. You know, we rolled out one-to-one, -one, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years ago. It's, I, I forget the dates exactly, but it's, it's been a long time. And we, we recognized early on that digital citizenship is going to be key to behavior online. Um, so what we do right now is we, we have an AUP policy for students, which every district has. And, and, uh, and we, we spend a lot of time at the beginning of the year for all students from K through 12 on what's expected in that acceptable use policy. Uh, we have put together videos uh, that we send out and they are geared towards elementary, ones for middle, ones for high, they're, they're leveled based on the audience so that they understand expectations online. We also provide, every student has to go through four hours of um, internet safety, digital citizenship courses per year. Um, and we level those. So we have a series of four classes that kindergartners go through and then the level four classes for first grade. So you never get the same class more than once the same lesson more than one time, uh, but they're all geared around internet safety, digital citizenship, digital literacy, uh, privacy, those sorts of things. So um, we do that based on grade levels. Every student has to do that once a year. We've also implemented a, um, you know, we have those kids who make the wrong decisions online. Uh, and oftentimes the initial response is to take the device away from them. So we've now instituted a, um, it's kind of a digital citizenship course that a student who does the wrong thing goes through uh, in order to keep their device. But more importantly, it helps them learn from the mistakes that they made. It is, it, so we, we try to take that bad experience that they've had and turn it into a learning experience. So they go through this course and the parents also have to go through it as well uh, so that they can understand what's happening. And then the parents is another key aspect that we began, we began focusing on last year. Um, we recognize that parents really do not understand the digital world. Uh, and, and so we are spending a lot of time working with parents now on behavior online for students because <clears throat> lots of behavior that impacts the classroom is coming from outside the classroom and the parents, they don't understand. 
they don't understand this you know snapchat or TikTok or any other the any of the tools that are the, the kids are interacting on they just don't understand it they're not part of it and so you know they understand facebook but kids aren't there anymore uh and so working with parents has been a huge success for us this year how do you do you have um learning sessions that parents come to that's required how do you educate them like that so what we do with parents is one we meet uh our team meets with the uh, our superintendent has a parent advisory council so we meet with that groups uh our team does and we go through monthly lessons with them uh we put, we put together a podcast that they also uh can listen to um, and then each of our technology coaches at the school they typically have throughout the course of the year what we call parent university nights uh, and so parents come in it's usually stuff it's it's things that our schools have been doing for years but now we have that digital citizenship component in there for the parents to go through uh, as it relates to their students online you know it, it's little things like how to do homework at home in an online world you know so they don't even understand how that works so going through things just as simple as that helps parents understand what the expectations are for from us for students online and then what kind of um professional development do your tech coaches provide to teachers for encouraging digital citizenship in the classroom so our, our teachers are required to um uh, be technology proficient uh, uh, during their certification process as, as part of the requirements from the State Department. And many of our courses that teachers are, have to go through are um, relate to digital citizenship. So teachers are getting that online learning and face-to-face -face instruction on digital citizenship. Uh, and we offer on a probably about five to six times a year different courses on digital citizenship for the teachers to participate in uh, and, and and that's probably one of the areas that's that we're still really working on oftentimes teachers don't see digital citizenship as their responsibility they see it as somebody else's like it's the librarians it's the tech coaches you know that's not my area of responsibility uh, and we're trying to shift that mindset to get them to understand that all behavior in the classroom is really the responsibility or falls under the domain of the teacher. Uh, and so they need to understand some of those things as well. And that's an area that we're still working on. That's interesting. Um, so you mentioned with your parent sessions, that's one way that you kind mm -hmm. of bridge digital citizenship in the school. Um, and translate it into digital citizenship in students' um, personal lives at home. What other ways do you um, strive to promote it in the classroom and then hope that students will take that into their lives beyond the classroom? Well, you know, we, we emphasize teachers having conversations with students. You know, the, the best learning for digital citizenship, you know, and behavior online is when teachers talk about it in the moment so when it happens they have to have that conversation with the student and, and and sometimes just not with the student but the whole class uh at that moment in time if somebody's done something or if something comes up in in the news that's related to digital citizenship how do you fit that into the conversation uh having those discussions between the teachers and the students is really critical in order for these things for, for students to understand how to behave online. We do that with normal everyday behavior. Uh, it's just getting that mindset that we also need to have these conversations about what happens in the digital world. Uh, you know, I, I wish I could come up with an easy way for them to recognize that instead of separating the two, it's really just one. Uh, you know, that our world now, there's, there's, the, the, the distinction between what happens in the real world and the virtual world is becoming so blurred that it's really just one behavior. Uh, but getting getting that, getting teachers to see that, getting students to see that is really difficult. But those conversations are critical in order for the students to grasp that and then take it outside of the classroom. Yeah, it seems like definitely a transition that takes a decent period of time for it everybody. does it does actively 
Um, so then transitioning to um, Dino a little bit, one thing we've heard more recently at events when people stop by our booth and see our product in action, they kind of have an aha moment and they're like, wow, this could really help me teach my students digital citizenship. And I think that's a testament to some of our specific features that help teachers do that. How do you um, encourage your teachers to use Dino to promote digital citizenship? Um, so one, one of the things we were looking for in a platform when we chose Dino is, you know, first and foremost for Dino, our, our, our interest in them at the beginning was the monitoring of the devices. Uh, and one of the things we were really interested in was a, uh, a platform that would monitor students' activity online without the teacher having to sit and watch what was happening. They could, it would do it in the background while teaching was happening. One of the things we learned based on, you know, after we got Dino was that, you know, it's a great teaching tool for students. Um, you know, students are in class all, all day long and it's a long day for them and they're online and it's, it's very easy for them to get distracted. Uh, and, and these things happen. It happens with adults. Uh, you know, I'm sure in every meeting that we go to, we can look around and see people who are on their devices doing something not related to the meeting that they're in. And, and students are the same way. Um, as adults, we know when to come back and, and make those adjustments. Students don't always have that same skill set yet because they're still developing. Um, but taking that and using it to, to help students is very valuable. So that the ability of Dino to just track every website that was visited gives teachers the opportunity to not go and say, ha, I got you. Look at what I see that you're doing, but looking and saying, okay, so Chuck, you, you're in a 90 minute class. And I noticed that 30 minutes of your time was spent on ESPN Amazon or whatever else the kid is doing and and you're off task that explains what's happening and so you can then have that conversation of not you're in trouble for being off task but what are some steps that you can take to stay on task how do you learn how to manage your time and uh, and stuff so that you do become more productive in the classroom I think the expectation of bell to bell work is kind of like a fantasy that every teacher has from students uh, but I think you can have that expectation of students being on task more than oftentimes they are and being able to use the tool in Dino that tracks the exact amount of time they're spent on sites uh, and showing the students that you can see that they are off task and then helping them learn how to stay on task is a great, is a great tool that we use to help them understand that distractions take away from the learning, but more importantly, um, you, you now have a tool to help you eliminate those distractions. So. Yeah, we often hear the metaphor of like taking the training wheels off. So oftentimes teachers will start with that active monitoring where they're going yes. through and blocking distractions or setting up blocking plans. And then as students become aware that they're being monitored, just letting Dino monitor in the background, collect that data, and hopefully students stay accountable. And if they don't, then teachers can, like you said, address that after the fact. Yeah, like, like I encourage all our teachers when I do the training, I, I, I tell them, I said, don't, don't set up any plans, no blocking plans, no allow only plans. Just go the first week or two and just see what the students are doing. Oftentimes, teachers will anticipate problems sometimes that aren't there. So go ahead and see what's happening. Uh, you know, the other the other feature of Dino that's really great is the ability to segment the students into groups. You know, some students need to have the training wheels and they need to be put on a plan. And other students have learned how to behave online. So they should be rewarded, so to speak, and not have to be monitored in, in the same way that every student is monitored. So we differentiate teaching and sometimes we just need to differentiate how we block, monitor, or allow students access to websites. So that's another tool that we use with our teachers to really help them teach our students best behavior online. Yeah, that's a great feature call out. And that feature, you know, initially we thought it would be great for test days where half the class is right. taking 
estimate need access, but it's turned into this tool that really does promote digital citizenship and give teachers the ability to let the reins go a little bit for students that they have more confidence in and reel the reins in for those that they know need that little bit of a gate around them during class. Yeah, just allowing a kid to listen to music sometimes, but other kids not. That's a big win for teachers, so yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we're glad that Dino's helping you uh, promote digital citizenship in the classroom. So um, I think one of the big things after, um, you know, you've encouraged students to become good digital citizens is then to get them to be able to lead their peers into also making those practices in their lives. So how do you um, in your opinion, move students from just being good digital citizens to then being digital leaders? Um, gosh, you know, when you, when you sent me that question, that was a tough one. It was one of those ones that, but it goes back to the, the same kind of things that we do for students who are behaving properly in class. Uh, it's recognizing those students. It, it's, it's giving them the shout outs when, when they're doing the right thing. Um, as, as students are recognized for good behavior, uh, it has a tendency to get them to become more of that leader outside of the adult supervision. Uh, and, and so I, I think the same thing has to happen in the digital world. When students are acting the way we expect them to act online, we need to recognize that. And, and, and then the more recognition you give to the students, the more likely it is that they're going to carry that beyond the classroom that they're going to tell other students, hey, you probably ought not do that, uh, those sorts of things. Um, you know, I, I will say that based on my experience, that probably works a whole lot better with the younger students. But our philosophy here in Richmond too is that if we get the students when they're younger and get them to learn the best behaviors in the digital world at, at, at the younger age, that it makes it much easier when they move into the secondary levels and become less supervised. They already have that foundation and so um, just that constant shout outs to the good behavior is always a great way to go. That's a good good tip and it definitely does um, change in between the different age groups for how mm -hmm. they're going to um, call out each other and, and be digital citizens. Um, so then one kind of question to wrap it up, if you had a piece of advice for um, someone in your same role or maybe a tech coach who are newly trying to promote digital citizenship in their district or school, what piece of advice would you give them for starting that off? Uh, my, my first piece of advice would be don't expect to change the world overnight. It, this is a process that takes a lot of time. There's a lot of ingrained behaviors that students are bringing with them to the classroom from outside the classroom that are really hard to break. Um, but I think that the first thing that has to happen is one, that teachers need to model the behavior for their students. Um, and, and so that's, that's an easy sell, getting teachers to model it, getting teachers to talk about that behavior um, and, and, and work with parents because we've seen the biggest change uh, after we start talking to parents because the parents are just, they, they're just so unaware of what's happening online that they don't even know. Like, you know, some parents were like, you know, we told them, we said, check their passwords and, and check their emails or their Instagram accounts and follow. And they're like, well, they don't want me to follow them. I'm like, you're the parent, you can follow or you can, you know. So, um, but having parents on board is a great resource. Baby steps uh, are really the best way to go. Uh, don't expect change to happen overnight. Stay persistent in the process. Uh, be intentional about the actions that you take and, uh, and, and, and recognize that we're working with students uh, and, and then look around the room at the adults and see how they have a struggle with online activity our students have a bigger struggle. And so we gotta be a little bit more patient with them. Those are some great pieces of advice that I'm sure our audience will benefit from. Um, that was all of the discussion that we had for today's webinar. If anyone has any questions, now is your time to submit them. It doesn't look like we've had any throughout the webinar. So I'll give it about a minute, let people submit their questions. Um, we are always producing new content. Um, 
to be helpful for ed tech initiatives um, like digital citizenship for tech coaches, teachers, and administrators out there. So feel free to visit our blog um, on our website at dino.com. Um, follow us on Twitter, and we are ramping up our YouTube page, so we will have some really great content on there starting next week, um, and we can't wait to share that with you. Doesn't look like we're getting any questions, Chuck, so I think we're going to wrap this up. Um, thank you so much for helping us host this webinar today. I think we had a lot of great um, conversation about digital citizenship and some good tips for how educators can promote it in their schools. Um, have a great holiday season, everyone. Have a great holiday, Chuck, and thank you again for participating. All right, thank you. All right, Thanks, everybody. Bye.